Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you're at in the world. Hello, everyone. It is me, everyone's favorite model of me, model making jester. Uh, I have another kit bashing video here for you today. Um, so, what will we be working on today? Well, we're going to be expanding upon the forces that I have available within uh, the ranks of my various cowboy gangs. Now, um, using uh, World War I, World War II miniatures uh, to kitbash uh, additional Wild West gunfighters seems like a weird thing to do, especially since I'll be using World War II uh, miniatures. Uh, this isn't completely out of left field, uh, especially with using um, uh, bolt-action miniatures, which is probably the largest and most prolific uh, collection of World War II 28mm hero scale miniatures. Uh, I have done this before with models of my own, um, such as with this fellow here, this gunfighter. He has a head off of an American 101st Airborne uh, model from the uh, Bolt Action starter set, which I picked up while it was on sale la late last year during Black Friday. Um, I've also used uh, the German Wehrmacht heads from the same starter set for uh, this fellow's head. Um, and then I've used things like the loose Car 98Ks as uh, just additional rifles in the hands of some of my cowboys. Um, I've used the machetes from the 101st Airborne to good effect because they're very comically oversized. Like, to actually see any 101st Airborne carrying a machete that freaking huge in World War II, I'm not sure about that. And then I also used one of the 1911 arms uh, and a matching arm, unarmed hand, uh, to, I whittled it down to create a Derringer for this gambler here. Uh, in the most recent issue of War Games Illustrated, if you uh, are subscribed to it here in the States, uh, you probably recognize this. This is the British and Canadian Soldiers Sprue. It was included for, included for free, so you get six of these fellows and all sorts of fun uh, attachments and pieces. Uh, I found this most useful because it came with pickaxes. Some of my townsfolk uh, models I was making with the leftovers of the cannon crew from the Civil War cannon uh, set that I got to make my uh, Gatling gun in the last video. So I used one of the pickaxes for this miner here, and then there's a haversack with a pickaxe and a cup, which looks good on this miner here. Or I guess these guys could be prospectors, but these are both for townsfolk. But uh, I've, that's not all I have done in terms of conversion work as far as uh, using the British soldiers. Uh, I used one of the uh, larger hats from the Civil War cr cannon crew um, to make a bowler for, one of, for the smoking head from the British uh, set. And then I gave this fellow... Uh, using two of the uh, matching arms from the British set, I gave this guy a Webley. So he has a Webley, which was around, it's a late 1800s model revolver. Uh, I don't know, maybe this guy was a British constable or officer before he came to the States and became a lawman. Uh, but it just adds that nice little bit of window dressing. You also get a bunch of these, I forget what these Scottish foraging caps are called. Um, but I created this kind of angry, dual-wielding Scotsman lawman uh, using one of the heads off of that sprue. Um, but what I'll be tackling today is handling the surplus, and I do mean surplus, of pieces off the uh, plastic gunfighter kits from uh, Great Escape Games, because now I've got quite a few of these sprue, uh, just, just, just a lot of heads and guns and things like that. And while I don't play bolt action, I do plan to eventually maybe in the future do some, um, 
some uh, Fistful of Lead World War II era gaming, because Fistful of Lead has gaming and rules for just about every era. Um, but that's not anytime soon. But uh, when I do that, I wanted to... Uh, I, would, I knew I would possibly include some French Resistance. Um, so what I did through everyone's favorite stateside budget alternative model supplier, War Games Atlantic. I got this box of 32 French Partisans off Amazon for about $30, which at a dollar, a little, a little under a dollar per model in this hobby, that is fantastic. War Games Atlantic, if you want to play a game, they have great alternatives for Imperial Guard and Space Marines, so if you want to play 40k, but you don't necessarily want to use 40k models, or you want to do some kit bashing or conversion work to create a more unique guard force, especially on the Imperial Guard front, they've got tons of great alternatives for Imperial Guard. I highly recommend you check out War Games Atlantic and their, uh, their various sci-fi lines. But um, they're also uh, keeping the old Eisenkarn line of uh, armored... Panzer troops, uh, kind of an alternative industrial age or sci-fi age German army that were very popular uh, and long-lived conversion models for 40k. Uh, War Games Atlantic, when they went bust, War Games Atlantic bought the rights and the molds and have kept quite a few of those model lines running. So uh, I have here their Partisan 1 French Resistance set and... Um, as you can see, you get all sorts of fun pieces to make some very good-looking French resistance agents. But I'm not going to need 32 of these fellows. I'm going to need maybe 10 to build French resistance. And I have a incomplete gang of gunfighters that could use some additional ranks. Uh, I have these five fellows that I just built with leftover parts. And they could use an additional five so that they have a full ten-man gang. Uh, which would be nice. So, let's get these fellows out of here. So, I'm going to be gauging. Just cold gauging. Uh, how well, or how easy it will be to convert these fellows into gunfighters. Because... Well, they may not look initially very Wild Westy. Um, they have very timeless clothing uh, that is not necessarily very specific to the 1940s. These are, after all, French, French peasantry. So, let's see here. Alright, so you get 32. There looks like there's four guys per base, so that's eight sprues. Um... Let's just have a look-see here. So you have your four bodies. You have uh, some revolvers, looks like. That's a Webley right there. That would be... What kind of rifle is that? That looks like a French Labelle bolt-action rifle. Uh, you get a Bren gun. You get an Enfield rifle, some potato mashers, lots of MP40s, as you would assume, uh, because, you know, it is a French resistance. They're going to be uh, robbing um, Germans of their weaponry. You get a Sten gun. You get a Grease gun. Looks like that's some sort of 1911, although the slide is a little too long to be a 1911. It definitely looks like a 1911. It just looks very oversized. Could be a Colt 1906, one of the predecessors. Get another Sten gun, because there was a lot of Sten guns being airdropped in crates to the resistance. Get a Mauser broom handle. You get some various uh, holsters as well. And then you get all sorts of fun heads, uh, lots of which are uh, berets. Looks like there's a bowler cap, some... Uh, soldier foraging caps, you get a fedora, or just a, a generic wide brim hat, you get some flat caps, and all those kinds of things. So all of those are very useful for my purposes, because uh, 
town of cessation is set in the turn of the century, so it's a late 1890s, almost 1900, when this gold rush happens. So uh, having things like 1911s, or so, sorry, having things like these early Colt auto loaders, uh, some of these uh, bolt action rifles are in existence during the era. The broom handle is definitely around by this time. Um, can add some unique abilities. Now, what kind of attachment point is on these heads? Ooh. Okay. So rather than a ball joint into a socket on the... It is a flattened... It's a flattened socket and flattened neck piece on the torsos. So the heads may not necessarily be an easy convert, but we have plenty to play with here. So let's get started. So for this gunfighter, all we're gonna be doing is using a body and a head. We're gonna be using the bowler head in the body off of this model and should be an easy build. And here we are. Surprisingly, it looks just fine. He could be a World War II revolutionary Frenchman. He could be just some random guy protecting his lawn with a double barrel shotgun. Uh, useful to know that these double barrels would work just fine for French resistance fighters as they would on your gunfighters. Hands look a little big, but it's not nearly as noticeable a difference as slapping these arms on true scale miniatures. Uh, even hero scale tend to have some slight differences, but uh, I think this looks just fine for the purposes, for my purposes. So that is one done, just real simple. Slap the bowler hat on him, slap the uh, two hands from the gunfighters, sprue on him, and then uh, slap him on a base and be done. So that's a quick and easy version. Let's get a little more advanced. And here we have the completed model. As you can see, I used a bit of Tamia putty to fill in the gaps around the neck and yeah he looks just fine like he belongs in the old west I used uh, these saddlebag arms I don't use enough of those and the Schofield aiming and yeah he'll make a good gunfighter for my purposes he'll do just fine but yeah this is a bit more advanced Again, I'm not sure what size this drill bit is. I keep loose drill bits. I, these didn't... The, the old power tool set that this came out of that I salvaged it from, I don't have it anymore. I just keep these in a jar in my desk and I have no idea what size this is. Actually, it doesn't say, but uh, I just kind of eyeball it when I'm drilling. I try to find something that matches up the socket and this was about the size of uh, his neck. So there you go. Uh, one more down and uh, on to the next. Ah, I would have, if you're intending to convert these to gunfighters, I would avoid this body here. It has a very obvious zipper on its jacket, which is uh, not necessarily era appropriate. These other ones, which are all like button canvas style, this one kind of looks like a like a, a leather bomber jacket, so you might want to avoid that as well. So I think I'm just going to use the, these two bodies as I go along to create these last couple of gunfighters. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we are finished. I decided to not go the advanced route on the last three, uh, which would be these guys here in the center. Uh, let's just take a quick look here. So we've got a guy here in a flat cap and just kind of a long coat and he's packing a Colt and a Schofield, which would be an interesting way to do wield pistols. Uh, I suppose if one is loading both with 45 Schofield as opposed to 45 Colt, which uh, 45 Schofield worked in both revolvers, then he would be just fine. Otherwise, uh, he's carrying around. Uh, 45 Colt for the Colt and 45 Schofield for the Schofield, but you know that okay, sera, sera. Uh That is neither here nor there. These guys are just supposed to be sort of desperate gunslingers um, throwing their lot in uh, or be you know armed uh, gold miners is what these uh, or, and prospectors is probably what these uh, this last gang building will be. Uh, next up, we just have a guy with a single action army. He's got sort of his flat cap or fedora, whatever you want to call it, 
uh, and uh, just a nice open, casual, maybe denim jacket or long coat of sorts. Uh, could be corduroy, uh, but yeah, just a townie with, uh, with a single action army. And that's pretty much the same for this fellow here. Uh, he's just in a long coat. Uh, he's got his uh, single action army out and he's not exactly at the ready, but he's definitely on edge and ready to fight. So yeah, uh, these uh, f Atlantic War Games, uh, Partisans number one French resistance models. Uh, they take to the plastic gunfighter set quite well. Uh, if I wanted to, I could turn that whole box of 32 into uh, a slew of gunfighters. Um, I might do some more interesting conversions with them uh, because I have a Mexican bandito gang that could use some extra hands as well as uh, the judges' bounty hunters. Um, could definitely use all of these to shore up the numbers, but uh, eh, that's neither here nor there. Uh, Fistful of Lead only advises a maximum of six models, but uh, they say that you can go upwards of 10. Uh, obviously, uh, I will probably stick to six, but having options and uh, alternative weapon loadouts. Uh, plus, the Fistful of Lead gang roster has room for eight models on the sheet. And uh, you will probably want more as during a Fistful of Lead campaign, enough people will get hurt and such that uh, some models might have to sit some fights out. But, uh, yeah, some good-looking fellows. They're nice and timeless. Uh, they're not overtly uh, cow punchers, but they definitely make convincing uh, townies, gamblers, that sort of thing. So, hope you enjoyed this video, ladies and gentlemen. I'll see you in the next one. Be sure to like, subscribe, ring that bell notification, leave a comment, do all that good YouTuber stuff, especially uh, ring the bell notification if you would like to be advised of when my videos come out. Uh, because chances are, if you're subscribed to some much larger YouTube channels, you won't even see my uploads. So, uh, if you ring that bell notification, you'll get an email, a uh, heads up as to when I have posted, and uh, a reminder, I've got a Patreon and a Twitch. Feel free to uh, support me if you like what I do here on Patreon, or follow me on Twitch and watch me play video games, or occasionally I will do uh, modeling and painting streams on Twitch as well, because that content is now allowed. Um, not sure, I don't have any sort of set upload schedule so far. Videos are dropping every Wednesday and Friday. Uh, I stream whenever I feel like it, uh, as I am still trying to find a job IRL. So, yeah. But hey, is what it is. If you'd uh, like to throw me a few bucks every month uh, to help me out, I'd appreciate it on the Patreon. So, uh, anyways, ladies and gents, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. And I'll catch y'all in the next one. Conquistiamo domani.